welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Face Syndicate, episode 109. Tonight, we're going to be talking about some of the YT 2400 reveals, a little bit about some AMG interview that just happened a couple hours ago. And as well as that, there was an article um, or an email where people had kind of like started to question AMG because the release for the mini extravaganza does not include X-Wing. So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that tonight. And without further ado, we will 100% cover the store champs, one that I did not go to that I was supposed to, but ended up sick um, and was not able to make it. But we have a co-host that happened to participate. With that being said, let me bring in my co-host for tonight. Please welcome to the podcast, JJ, the new and improved Lions fan. How are you tonight, sir? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Uh, had a great weekend. Uh, got to go to a Durham Bulls baseball game here in uh, in North Carolina yesterday with the family. Uh, spending some time before uh, the family goes on uh, on vacation and on trips and stuff. So just uh, had a really great weekend and uh, excited for uh, to talk about some more spoilers and news. Joining me is runner-up and number seven in the tournament this weekend. Alex, how are you today, sir? Oh, I'm not too bad. Tired. It's a Monday. This is abnormal. I don't like it. (laughs) But I got my internet back, so I can do this now. I know. We were a little concerned that you wouldn't have internet for tonight. There's only just Um, a couple tornadoes. It's fine. So... Which is funny because we didn't have, we had bad weather over here on the west side, but we did not have, I haven't lost power. We didn't have a lot of power outage compared to the east side of Detroit for whatever, or east side of Michigan for whatever reason. I had power one morning and then I came back from work and I didn't. And the storm was the day before. They just shut off my grid. (laughs) So it wasn't unlimited power is what you're saying. Someone had the unlimited power and it wasn't me. (laughs) (laughs) It's never Alex. (laughs) Um, yeah, so I went out to Detroit too, but I ended up not being able to play. I ended up getting sick, um, the day, the morning of, which is hilarious because it was at noon and I woke up early. So I was up at nine o'clock and I was like, all right, I'm ready to go, go downstairs. We have breakfast. Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. And 15 minutes later, back in there, 15 minutes. It was like, after like an hour, I was like, all right, I'm not going to leave the house at all. I'm just going to stay here, hang out with my buddy, um, which was fun for him. I mean, like, I only see him once every three months, and um, his brother passed away uh, last week, or last year, or not last year, last month. That was a funeral we all went to. So um, it, it probably was better for him in the long run because he doesn't get to see a lot of people from the east side anymore. And, um, yeah, this or the west side anymore. So they, it kind of worked out, I think, in his benefit. We got through a full Arkham campaign. Like a full, the nice. whole full campaign box wow. in two days. Nice. So, that is an excessive amount of work. <laughs> that was, it was eight rounds, just the two of us. It was on standard. So it wasn't like we were playing on really hard mode, but I'll tell you what. Yeah, that was like, the was literally the most Arkham I've ever played in my life. I've never, and it was the uh, Forgotten Age box set, the one with all the snakes. So like half the setup, you're like, Oh my god! I gotta read a million things to figure out which one to set up next, and <laughs> it was like a lot longer setup than we thought it would be. But um, and I hate snakes too, so that was not super fun. Um, I had a nightmare uh, the night before, so there's that. It was an actual. Were you watching? Arkhamor. Were you watching Raiders of the Lost Ark the night before? No, 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 no. <laughs> we, when we watch that, I get nightmares from that too. So um, Python, the Anaconda. <sighs> I don't watch either. I haven't watched any of those. So I don't watch snake horror movies if I don't have to. <laughs> Indiana Jones, I have to make an exception for just because everybody likes it. So um, Ice Cube was an anaconda. Well, yeah, that is true. I do like Ice Cube, <laughs> but not enough to watch that movie. So. But anyway, so it was a it was a, a fun weekend, I think, for all Alex took a draw round one um and and then doesn't answer so like i'm texting him saying what the fuck is wrong with you and i get no response it's like i know you're not doing anything you're literally doing absolutely nothing i just want to know why you thought it was a good idea to take 
a draw. Okay, yeah. So I took a draw first round. First round opponent was Zach. We thought it would be kind of boring. I like to create a lot of chaos, so I'm like, yeah, why not? This this scenario heavily favors me, and my list will probably beat us anyway, so I'll just take the draw. And then we played a game, and then I won 20 to 11. So you didn't even need the draw. No, I essentially went 3-1. I just And I got the pair up next round, so like I really did go 3-1. But my record says 2-1-1. One, one. It does. <laughs> Never go for the dro- draw, man. <laughs> I'd consider dropping at one, one, and one just because that'd be really funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, so... and I technically did better than Mark Rawberg, which is hilarious because, like, he two owed and then played like some really good people and ended up dropping below me because I went two, one, one. I will forever hold that against his head over his head. So it sounded like it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of cool uh, prizes. Um, I do. I am sad I did not get to go, but um, not super, super sad, right? Because at the same token, it helped other people out. Though I thought I thought I was doing everybody a favor, like because there was like an odd number of people. So I was like, all right, I'll drop, and then it's back down to twenty four. It's not going to be as big of a deal. And then somebody got to buy each round. I was like. Okay, all right. Well, I feel bad now, but it's a little too late to get, you know, like by the time any of the medicine I was taking kicked in, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. So, but yeah. And Tim, Tim bailed, right? Because he, he also has having car trouble. He was going to come down too. So, yes. Yep. But I'm glad you all had a lot of fun. So I think to kick off the show tonight, what I want to do is let's talk about the new spoilers from AMG. I am not as excited about some of this stuff, but it is still pretty exciting. We're getting new content. So I'm excited for new content. I don't like Dash, and I don't think Rebels needs any more help, but it is fun to see uh, some new ships hit the table. I, I don't know. I think I think this version of Dash that we're seeing is a lot more reasonable, a lot better for the game. I think this is how he probably should have been set up from the get-go, and there, there's just a lot of changes so far for the YT2400 um, that's come out so far. Um, so uh, I guess I'll start off with Dash here. So he's an initiative 5 pilot here for the YT2400. His ability reads, during the engagement phase, you ignore the effects of obstacles that you are over overlapping and the chassis ability now is changed as well it comes with sensor blackout while you perform a primary attack at range zero to one you roll one fewer attack die and while you defend at range one you roll one fewer defense die so this ship does not want to be anywhere near range one of anybody because it's rolling one it becomes a uh two die uh one agility uh large base ship uh that uh that definitely doesn't want to be anywhere near uh uh, anybody there so this uh this definitely wants to be long range far away uh taking shots around the edge of the board just kiting around and not be able to uh to like have anybody trigger that sensor blackout um because of this reducibility and the native three die attack um this is probably going to come in cheaper than the original dash rendar that we had um, that had four red dice um and the uh and the ability only affected its primary attack not the uh, defensive um the defensive capability so i think this is going to be a much cheaper dash this is probably going to be a lot more reasonable i'll be interested to see what uh what slots they're going to give uh dash for this um for this version uh um so uh we'll see how it comes out yeah it has so it is still a three die at range one but it is a two die at range zero because you just roll one last but you get the bonus die at range one so it's like three dice then it's range one you lose defense die then at range zero you lose an attack die mm-hmm. which is really cool uh tragic but really cool yeah <laughs> He doesn't want to see. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to see interceptors. He doesn't want to see uh, a wings. He doesn't want to see anything that can bump. <laughs> doesn't want to see any decent ace out there or reposition or anything with a boost. Nope. Which we have zero of in the meta right now. Did um <laughs> did uh was Dash always a five? Not not a yeah. six, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, he was always initiative five. Yeah. But at least they're not giving them an initiative six or anything like that. 
Yeah. So, so do you think it's even going to be viable to run him, like to keep him at uh, out of range one? In, yeah. In his, he's got to hog the asteroids, which makes sense thematically. And so that works with his ability, sort of. Yeah. So, I mean, there are a couple of ways that you could build it out, you know, for for Dash in order for him to be really effective. Number one, you're going to want to uh, run him with gas clouds. Um, if you can get him onto a gas cloud, he can um, essentially break any Milox that are going to be on him. Um, and then he can still take that shot uh, through the the gas cloud. Obviously, if you have trick shot on him, that bumps him up to a four die attack. Um, and assuming that the new Outrider title, as it's uh, listed on the standard Lord Icaus translated as well he'll get that bonus as well um of course he does run the risk of getting that ion uh sorry not that well the ion and the deplete um but um, at least or the strain that's what yeah, i meant the strain. The strain. auto strain chance for for our for uh, ions. ions yeah um but he um he can at least not have to worry about taking damage from going on a rock um or on a on a debris cloud so there is that possibility there but um but yeah i mean it's, it's going to solely depend on the pricing for uh what he's going to come with what loadout he's going to have and what slots he's going to have and that's really going to make the determination on how viable this new dash is going to be so to be viable right as a custom build because we know they might go harder into the standard loadout build in terms of points value do you think this is going to come in at six then yeah i be, are you sure though because i mean so han has got 13 health and he's seven would you rather have him at seven points with lots of loadout let's just say 25 loadout or at six with like 15 or 16 loadout i don't care how much loadout you have on him i don't think seven points is worth it Okay. Yeah, I honestly, he's going to have to compete more with Ezra Gauntlet, um, who's a six point gauntlet um, that has almost the same amount of health, actually two more health than than Dash has um, and cost six points. Um, he's going to have to have a little more loadout than than Ezra, and it has to be cheaper than Han because at the same price point as Han, Dash is not going to see any play. Like you have such a huge drawback with that defense at range one and the lack of offense at range one that you actually <clears throat> to be kind of a pain to you you're just gonna have to toilet the whole thing. There's not you have to set up objectives on the edge of the board to try to make use of it. Yeah. And at best you get what two objectives that you can place on the edges of the board for for most right. of these scenarios. Yeah. I mean the the barrel roll helps a lot because that is like a range man for a large base. So you if you are moving after someone, you can barrel roll to not be range one, which is useful. Um, but even then, I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of like loadouts you would even put on them to make them like super effective. I mean, like as we're going uh, if, if he comes within the listen slot, you know, burnout thruster is definitely like a must have on dash. Can you do burnout thrusters on large bases? Uh, oh yeah, you're right. It's restricted to medium. Ah, uh, right. dang, damn. Ah. Oh, well. small and medium base ship. Sad. So it was like really <laughs> sad dash. Sad. Yeah. So, how about Lebo? What is Lebo sporting us? <clears throat> uh, Lebo has his ability back. Same ability as it as it is in, in Rebels. So it's after you defend or perform an attack. If you spent a calculate token, gain a calculate token hopefully he has a crew for C-3PO. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, <laughs> that's the, play. <laughs> the only reason like I want that crew is just for C-3PO, and that's it. Yeah, because he, he would be really, really good on defense. Because you do spend a Calculate token to use C-3PO's ability, so you do get yeah. it back, which is something people almost tried at the beginning of 2.0, and then they took it away, and everyone's like, oh, there goes that old jassy. Yeah, if Lebo comes with no crew slot, then it has to be five points. If he comes with a crew slot, then six points. For Rebels. Oh, yeah, not, for the, Rebels. not that we're getting these in Scum, but like the standardized loadouts are going to be yeah. something different. Yeah, and we'll get to the standardized loadouts in, in, in a second. So you think if he gets the crew slot, you got to make him six points? No questions? Yeah. Okay. I and I, and I do think that's a pretty sick that. ability, right? Like, But at the same token, you're still losing the dice. You still lose the same dice, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if he has C three PO, cool. You have a a chance to 
automat like get two of aids. <laughs> um, so it's kind of it's cool and it's useful, but I still think it's it's not like it's overwhelming. So yeah, and honestly, this uh, the Lebo would pair very very good with um, with K two SO crew um, to make sure that he always has a calculate token. Um, because obviously Lebo would be very, very susceptible to, to jam. Um, so, you know, that will turn off his ability essentially. So you always want to guarantee that he has that, that calculate token. And at I3, I don't think it's very difficult for people to be range one of them. Yeah. It's going to be real careful. Although this picture, uh, these, these two pictures are different than the ones from the standardized. The standardized use the art that's on their cards. Dash is the old 1.0 burnout slam yeah. and Lebo is uh, Eden Vril Erasure who would actually be very good for this game right now. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't exist anymore, which is weird because he's a dash's go pilot. So. All right. Well, let's look at the, the other standard loadout cards, which I'm guessing are the same based on what we're kind of seeing in terms of um, the way it looks, right? And they, they even have the same name. I'm in it for myself, and he thinks he's funny. Um, yeah, I assume if they have the same subtext, they're exactly the same card. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's my guess, and which makes sense, right? You know, it's, it's easier to balance. We see a couple of new things on here. Seeker missiles. I, I'm going to, before we get into any of the cards, I see seeker missiles. You guys think we're gonna get seeker missiles in the pack then? Like, can I get seeker mm. missiles for some, mm. you know, just standard? Uh, I think this is one of those these um one of these upgrades where they're gonna keep it strictly on standard loadout for now, just so that way they don't have to balance it with the rest of the game, uh, with all the other uh, missile carriers in the game. Specifically, look at um at uh, A wings and um with their their ability to carry this particular missile. I think that it's it's just easier, cleaner to just leave them on for these ships for now for the time being. What if you make the missiles like eight points, so like A wings can't take them or something? So Tycho, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine, honestly. If Tycho just has it, whatever. Keo. Eh, that's fine. Oh, okay. Just force, they have force anyways. I mean, they're they're cool. They're good. But like, if you're paying that much for them, I don't know. I'm not like super threatened by secret missiles, honestly. I think the differences in scum they become a little bit better because of cutthroat. And Empire, you have. Um, any, do you have anything in Empire that recharges charges? No, it's just scum, right? It's yeah, just scum. Throat. Yeah. So, like, again, I'm not saying it's broken, you know, but I, and maybe scum, maybe scum needs it. Um, <laughs> needs a little bit of help there. But yeah, I, I, I think you know, like being able to recharge those, like that seems crazy to me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I like them. I think it would be nice to have them in standard, but you're right. They probably will not do either of those in there. But it does help Dash out because his blackout sensor is only primary, correct? Correct. But Seeker Missile, you can't shoot range one anyways. Yes. Yes, yeah, so, so it's two to three, so. Yep. True. So, All right. So what is the ability on Dash, Alex? I don't want to keep it consistent with Dash and Lebo. Uh, okay, th fine. I don't know. You're the first person <laughs> I saw. I'll do it. Uh, so his card looks exactly the same as it does. The scum one right here it looks exactly the same one as the rebel one. So I'm going to assume they're equal. Um, Dash is after you gain a red token as a result of moving through or overlapping an obstacle, you may transfer that red token to a friendly ship at range zero to one. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's okay. Like, if you go through a debris, I guess you can pass off the stress or strain so, off a gas cloud. <laughs> so there, there are a couple of uses for this in Rubble, but in in Scum, who really benefits from having a red token on them? No no one. Uh, Cad Bane, I guess you can pass stress, it off. I guess. Cad Bane, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Cad you Bane. can pass it off, I guess. Um, I guess you could pass it to someone who's a different five or six if you want to kind of treat it like a gleb kind of thing, but I I don't know. 
Uh, but he also has a bunch of new interesting upgrades. He has Mercenary. Uh, after a friendly ship at 0 to 2 is destroyed, before it is removed from the play area, you can transfer one of its green tokens to yourself. It's uh, as you die, Katos Lichos. He's got the uh, Seeker missiles we were talking about. It's four charges. Three die just the front. Range two to three. Attack. Have a lock. Spend a charge. During the modify uh, attack dice step, you can spend up to two additional charges to change one eye result to a hit result for each charge spent that way. So if you get a really good shot and roll two eyeballs, you spend three charges on your missile to hit for three. Uh, it also has Lebo as a crew, so you cannot run Lebo and Dash in the same list. Uh, not the standardized versions, at least. And as after your repair damage oh, card, yeah. you can perform an action on your action bar. So, so I'm gonna before you get to the outrider title, right? Like that, this that's a little dickish for Scum, right? Well, it's also Scum's the same the only... for the title. <coughs> like Scum's... you can't run them both because they both have the title too. That's yeah. true. And Scum's only got this the the standard loadout, right? Yep. So that's to me that kind of feels a little dickish if 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 I'm being honest. Yeah, it is. Uh... Scum is only getting the standardized versions and you are running Dash or you are running Lebo. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I feel like if they would have uh, introduced like the custom pilots for Scum as well, you know, you could have like at least mixed and matched. But mm, this be... is like a hard, this is a hard no. You're only ever going to run one white C2400 <laughs> on in Scum. Period. Would you want that Scum Dash with Kira? You know, terrifying oh, it would be. Oh <laughs> man, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why they didn't do that for Scum. <laughs> No, I mean you can also do you can run the um the escape craft pilot um the, the out, out outrider guy or whatever and you can the have outer rim pioneer. Yeah, there you go. Outer rim pioneer <laughs> and you can just have dash land on something and and still shoot. Yeah. Well, and yeah. So um but the outrider uh ship title that's different. I'm assuming this is probably going to be the normal title and they're just going to get rid of the other one. Mhm. Mm uh, this is while you perform a primary attack at range three, roll an additional attack die. Um, and uh, the other half of it is while you perform an attack that is obstructed by an obstacle, you can change one of the defender's evade results to a focus result. You have juke if you are obstructed. Yeah, trick shot juke on uh, dash. Yes. Well, it, it, you don't get the extra die for the obstruction just at range three. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah, the, the normal outrider tile gives you that, but yeah, this is just juke through, juke through an obstacle. Um, basically, you roll three dice if you're at range three. It's so, it's, I love the design because you're just like, well, the closer you get to the ship, just the worse it is. And I appreciate that they just gave you an extra die at range three. Yeah, it's like you're you're almost never want to run this in a scrum. Like you always want to put this on the side and fly far away as possible. Like you get into a range two bubble and always point uh, dash away and then just four straight from there afterwards because you don't want to be anyone anywhere near. You always want them chasing dash, never ahead of dash. So, all right. So two two questions, right? You start blowing up obstacles and this becomes less efficient, correct? Like, you just, I mean, if, the, out, the other half of the Outrider, yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, and I think you're right. I think that's going to be the new Outrider title, which is, I don't know. I actually, I don't know. I don't like the YT 2400 anyway. Like, I hate it. Like, I hated Dash. I hated flying against them. I just, and that's because I'm a droid player. So that's part of the reason. But, um, these, these things are really threatening, man. <laughs> So, so, like in the in the chat, we had a, a question from DJ ask: Is this even going to be comparable to Falcon Han? I don't <laughs> think any of these things are comparable to Falcon Han ever. Like, unfortunately, like I think before when Dash could do all of Dash's tricks, if they had given Dash a seven point cost and let you run him the way he could before, yes. Now, mm, no. I I don't see this as a replacement. I I don't under I even the standard loadout one. I just don't. 
This is hardly a replacement for like Dengar, let alone like Falcon Han. So going at it from like a scum angle and rebels. I don't know, I don't know why anyone would ever run this. So for um for for his current ability for this for the scum, you think he's still a six cost? Yeah. Honestly. I th- I think he's gonna have to be. It would be nice though to see if they bring him in at a five cost. I just I don't know with all that health and stuff like that. I don't know. I think you we'd have to play test it to find out how aggressive this is, right? Well, it's a large base scum ship, so I can only assume it comes in at seven points, just despite everyone. Sure. Well, we can talk about dice. what it should come in at. <laughs> I mean, if Dash and Lebo cost the same, I don't know. I still might take Lebo. <laughs> well, I will tell I get... you, the the, the, Lebo, uh, the Lebo crew is pretty cool, though. The, I won't lie and say I do like that crew, and I kind of hope Scum gets that crew as a standalone card. Because like well, that would be sweet. They they already do. It's called Pelimato. Well, this is like after you repair a damage card, right? <laughs> so if you ever yes. like get hit by a direct hit, right? You repair the card yes. when you flip it down. So yep. you can do an action. Oh, you get fair. a direct and just barrel roll. Yes. Fair, fair. That's true. Or you know something like that. Just because some of those the wordings on the damage cards are like really weird when you flip them down. Because I don't think, like, Panic Pilot technically repairs itself. It's just you gain two stress. <laughs> so, uh, but, like, there's some yeah. of them that are like, hey, if you do this, repair this card. Or, like, uh, Blue Stabilizer, right? <laughs> you do, like, a 4K. Or, no, just do, like, a 3-bank, whatever. Take the extra damage and then get two actions. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. That's about as good as a user going to get out of that. <laughs> yeah, I do like Lebo, though. Like, I, I do think, I think that crew crew is pretty cool i do like that it's very thematic i mean he was a repair droid like that's his whole shtick so he's just constantly repairing things because dash keeps plowing through obstacles so all right well let's keep moving jj what is the other standard loadout libel 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 the libel card that's what (laughs) i'm gonna call him now libel (laughs) So uh, this new standard loadout for Scum Lebo uh, appears to be the same for the Rebel Lebo. Uh, says at the end of the engagement phase, you may spend a calculate token to acquire lock on an enemy ship at range two to three. It comes with uh, efficient processing, which after you gain a calculate action, you gain one calculate token. Um, secret missiles as well, and then the Outrider title as well for this one here. Um, it feels like the most basic version of Lebo, basically with a built-in IG uh, giving you to calculate every time you do that calculate action um that should also work with the uh when he bumps um since you can perform a red calculate mm-hmm. um you would get a second calculate as well so that's pretty cool um the because of the cool because you're, you're shot, yeah, shooting yeah. at rate zero <laughs> that's true that's true um but you know with the with the ability um you can at least if you're at range zero uh, you're unlikely to spend both of your calculates mainly because you're rolling one green die um so you can at least spend that extra calculate and uh get a target lock for a follow-up shot on the next turn if you need to uh, but this is a very very trimmed down basic version of lebo i see this coming out of five points easy yeah do you also notice he's got a lock link red rotate for some reason yeah, yeah, it's uh, he's unique action just to him, and it's not available to Dash. I don't know why you'd ever rotate. <laughs> with yeah, one and, and you can't link it with the ability because his ability is acquire a lock, not uh, yep. take a target lock action. So you won't be able to do the acquire lock rotate, which would have been insanely good. But, um, but you can but do yeah. it while stress. So if you do do that bump calculate, you still can acquire that lock. Yep. Just not on whatever ship you bumped, because it's range two to three. Yep. <laughs> I think five is probably pretty good. Yeah. Uh, up cost for him, like pretty reasonable. Because I would yeah. just compare him to like Manaru. Well, and I think the big thing is here. <clears throat> I don't know. I think the big thing is here is is it is nice to see other ships come in. People were very scared of Dash, and guess what happened is now they are kind of corralling Dash in, um, which, whatever. It is what it is. I don't think Rebels needs help with new ships. Like, I just don't think they're, and I don't... I don't think this helps Rebels at all. Nope, I, I, I don't, and I don't think this really helps um, Scum that much. I will say an, a five-point 
Lebo is an interesting is an interesting sell. I do think that. Um it because it leaves that extra point of room for you to be able to fit other stuff around him. It's probably better than taking a seek and bosk. Yeah. That, that's about it. But like so is Manaru. Sure, and Manaru you can kind of outfit how you want. And we don't have points, so we know when is what are these coming out? This is uh, uh September thirtieth. No, September? September 30th, I believe. Yeah. I heard both the end of August and also the end of September. So <laughs> don't know which one. I'm gonna yeah, guess I'm the SMOD. Yeah, I, I'm checking the SMOD shop just to see what they've posted. Yeah, I mean at least Scum got some new stuff. It's it's okay. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think that um, I, I was honestly expecting um, at least more pilots to come out in this pack, you know, namely, um, even though he's not everybody's favorite pilot, uh, but Mad, Mads Martson, who is uh, Commander Sato's uh, nephew from Rebels, um, part of Iron Squadron, uh, would have been at least a worthy addition to add in as a third pilot um, for this pack. Also, um, including the rest of his crew members as potential crew people that could have been part of that particular pack to help um, help out that particular pack, like make a bigger impact for Rebels. I think that would have been really good as well. Um, hopefully this also means that maybe the next Hot Shots and Aces pack that could be a potential pilot that they can think about including um, for the YT2400. Uh, the other uh, part of it too is maybe including him as an X-Wing pilot as well because we do know that he shows up in Season 4 of X-Wing or of Rebels, not X-Wing um, as a pilot, a uh, pilot a t65 alongside hera so that could be something that could be setting up for the future um and uh and who knows maybe if he makes an appearance in ahsoka um as a pilot um we that might push uh amg to include him in the, the next pilot pack do you remember 1.0 the other 2400 pilot eden vril the one yes, that literally no one used do you yes. know how good of an ability that would be right now Oh yeah, that was you can roll an extra attack die on a primary attack if they're stressed. That'd be so yeah. good for scum right now. Oh yeah, like, that's, especially that's with the bump. Scum. Yeah, that's yep. all of scum shtick is like red token control. And if you manage to get someone stressed, roll an extra attack die. It's like the Falcon title. <laughs> all right, well let's move on. I think what we're gonna do is let's talk a little bit about. Mini extravaganza and the three one two um interview, right? So I think I think we could go ahead and, and probably cover that and then we'll get the star champs here around eleven. Um so if you didn't know, AMG released an article uh about mini extravaganza this year, and then they had like a follow up tweet, which I don't know, do we call them tweets anymore? Because now it's X and I, I, I don't know what, what is and Ed, what noise is X made? Yeah. <laughs> Cough, cough, uh, it putter, putter. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hopefully, we gain yeah. in that that platform too. I mm, anyway, let's. We're not gonna get discussing Elon Musk and Twitter or any of that shit. Yeah, yeah. like whatever. Who cares? But it would be nice. It'd be nice if AMG did all their communication not that way as much. But yeah. Anyway, so AMG released an article about um, mini extravaganza. And that we're going to kind of cover a little bit. And the big thing I think here is there is some noticeable leaving out of X-Wing. Now, I don't know if I'd be concerned about that right away. We're going to kind of get into, we're going to go through this real quick, and then we'll kind of talk a little bit about the AMG interview that 312 Squadron uh, had. If you have not seen it yet, uh, we'll have a link in the description this week, and you can head over to their Twitch page and watch it i'm assuming nick's gonna put that out in i don't know for sure i'm he said, assuming he would put it yeah. out youtube right yeah nick uh <clears throat> nick said that it'll be be posted on the 312's youtube page in two weeks although if you're a subscriber already for 312 uh you can uh review it now and you can also grab the audio only um if you're like driving and not able to watch it directly um i do recommend that you guys watch it it was a, a great interview uh thank you nick sperry for uh having that uh that 
that interview with AMG. I think it's definitely worth a watch to at least um, get a, a little bit of insight for like what goes on behind the scenes there. But uh, we'll talk about it here shortly. Yeah, and if you, if you don't sub over to them, head on over there and make sure you sub to them uh, so you can get the interview. So they also just streamed a... Oh, there goes my camera. That's my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tanner's keyboard. Um, that was a mistake. Anyway, they, they also streamed uh, Fairhaven. Was it Fairhaven? I don't remember the name. It's, we, we're going to cover that one tonight, but they... Fair Games in Illinois. They also yeah. did some um, streaming of X-Wing stuff, uh, in-person X-Wing too, so... You can go ahead and actually you catch up on those and they do. I don't know if Nick has a schedule on his Twitch or not, but he might post it in the chat. Um, they do stream other other tournaments, especially mm -hmm. out in Chicago. So. Absolutely. All right. So really, the article kind of talks about when it's going to be. They are also going to share an announcement for MCP ahead of Gen Con. I'm going to be frank and tell you I don't care. I, and I know that sounds callous. I just don't care. I don't play Marvel Crisis Protocol. I'm not going to ever get into it. I just don't care. You know, um, I am interested to hear new stuff for Shatterpoint, though. Not that I've played much of Shatterpoint, but I am interested to hear some of the Shatterpoint talk um, in Mini Extravaganza. I do think that that game is is definitely pretty good um, for it. They kind of talk a little bit about announcements, right? The announcements. Are gonna are, will always happen when and how they need to in order to support the games. Our plan is to have a key update twice a year alongside Adepticon in March and Mini Extrava Extravaganza in September. And I think that's the big, that's what a lot of people are latching onto. Oh, we only get two big updates a year. One of them's at Gen Con or at at Adepticon. We got that, <clears throat> and then the next one's gonna be in September at Mini Extravaganza. And oh, guess what's not in Mini Extravaganza? Now, to be fair, you don't paint X-Wing ships all the time. I don't, at least. Though I think I need to, because now we have a Separatist player, a couple Separatist players that are local. And, like, <laughs> when we played against each other, we almost mixed up our dirges. <laughs> so it, was, it was like, all right, all right. So I told Corey, I was like, hey, you got to help me uh, paint some ships here, because I need to get some ships painted. I yeah, this is why I always go with the colored bases, just so, because nobody else runs them for some reason. So I always go with the colored bases. It makes it easy. Yeah, maybe I need to get some of those too. I don't know. My have ship's those. googly eyes on them. You have googly <laughs> eyes on them. <laughs> so. Well, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to put googly eyes on mine. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll put them on Doofus. How about that? I'll put them on Doofus. <laughs> yes, that would be great. One. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they're going to they talk a little bit about Shatterpoint. We're not going to kind of go over that. We're not a Shatterpoint podcast. If you are interested, I would recommend watching their mini extravaganza streams because they are going to talk about that. Um, they do address um, if Epic ships are coming to X-Wing, and the answer is no. Um, so the answer is going to just be no. Like, they don't want to come out and tell you, no, we're not going to do it. But the answer is no. Like, you're not getting... Yeah, you're not getting now, epic ships. Now, to to just recall the memory, this was something that did come up during the Adepticon uh, stream that they when they revealed a lot of the stuff that was coming on for later on in the year. Um, they did specify that for this year and for the following year, epic ships was not on their radar. They do plan to eventually take a look at it later on, but as of right now, there is no plans for epic ships or epic play to be revamped into it. Um, so it is something that had been previously announced. This announcement further reinforces what they originally said at Adepticon there. But that being said, um, if you uh, if you are an X-Wing player that uh, uses uh, yet another uh, Squad Builder 2.0 uh, uh, that's done by Rathos, he did add an Epic option on there that updated the Epic ships points uh, on there. So that way, if you do want to play Epic play you can use that squad builder to help you build out your list they are not balanced in any way shape or form for any of the upgrades or ships but they are available up there for you to still make up your list up there you can create squads for up to 40 points for epic play and uh, take that and go and play and enjoy it up there and until we're we're able to hopefully get official support from amg but at least that's available for the community to use for epic play yeah and i think I think a lot of times, you know, like we talk about that and like, I don't know, like if I have to pick a, a whether we're going to get um, commitment in terms of 
store champs and you know competitive play or epic i want i want the competitive piece of it i don't care as much about epic um i think the concept is really cool and i really like playing epic i think that i have a hard time i have a harder time fitting it into my like it, that would be one thing for my whole local night and it's really hard to drag all of my stuff along with me like it's not it's cumbersome yeah. it, it, it is i still think i want to do an epic day uh, in Zealand, one of the, one of these days, and just like let's just like throw some tables together, and let's play some epic. Um, I know D, yeah, <clears throat> from my locals, she wanted to do that at one point, and I said, oh yeah, let's get it together. And we just we never. Did it. So I I think we maybe this winter we just need to get together and do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, the only time I really touch my epic ships is whatever I get into a campaign of of Heroes of the Atari Cluster. Um, that's when I really like to bring out my epic ships to to play. Um, I think that's a fun variant for it. Or uh, some of the epic play uh, scenarios that require an epic ship are pretty good. Um, if you do have the epic battles expansion, um, there's just some things that you can definitely consider running if you guys wanted to do something at your local. Uh, definitely check it out. It is available online. You can check out the different scenarios. Yeah, and that squid. I hope they update, update stuff for the squid ship, uh, because that squid oh, yeah. ship is so fun to run. Yeah, yeah. And I think you put C three P on squid ship. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so let's keep moving because I don't want to spend all night um, here. Uh, so uh, we, I don't. Again, they have more about Shatterpoint. Um, they do talk about deadlines that have been pushed back. I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the case. Uh, they talk about Legion. I don't know anything about Legion at all. And then they talk a little bit about changes to their games, right? And I, and I don't know. I don't know. Some of this stuff right here is, again, I've said this before. I do not think they are the greatest PR communicators at all. I just don't. I don't feel it. And I don't. This is not a knock. I get. I, I, I guess like I, I don't want this as a negative. Like. But it is kind of like this is just let's just be frank. They're not that's not their strong suit, you know, now them doing an interview with Nick and, and all those things like that does help with some of it. You know, when they start doing some of these interviews and, and I don't know how often we got FFG interviews before, um, you know, because I joined in 2020. And so, not very often. you know, like to, to be fair, like if AMG is doing more of it than they did, then there is some credit to be shared there. Right. Um. You know, I know they've done at least three of them in the last two years, so there you go with that. Um, anyway, they, they talk about how they work ahead. They talk about some of this stuff is hard to make changes. Balancing issues are not needed as often, right? You know, the primary focus is on our design versus um, having development team perfect rules. I think this is more geared towards Legion than it is to X-Wing because I think to some extent, we have, uh, I think the gameplay itself is decently balanced after their recent change. Um, and then the points are kind of a fluid thing. And I think we're going to have to get used to, if they only give us two or one point change a year, I mean, we have to get used to that piece of it, right? Like, that is different. FFG did use that as a way to shake the meta up. If AMG is not looking to do some of that, um, then I think... I don't know. I think I think that changes the game a tiny bit. But they are also releasing card packs, and if they start releasing a lot more card packs or things that interact, that will shake the meta up as we see it anyway. Like that will do some of the things that larger point shifts were doing before. Um I agree. So anyway, I, I I guess I don't know. Is there anything else you guys had on this article that you wanted to cover? Um... Well, I think that um, the the main takeaway is you know obviously we're not going to have any more um, we're not going to have any new um, updates coming up for Mini Stravaganza for X Wing and of course the announcement for Epic Play. Those are some of the more common questions that we've uh, that they've had on their streams there for you. Um, but, um, and again, I want to refer you guys over to 312 Squadron for that cast over there because they went into pretty good detail for what the development process looks for them, uh, looks like for them, uh, starting from the conception uh, phase, meaning where they're trying to build up the idea for a particular ship or upgrade uh, or 
pilot or, or any expansion for X-Wing, um, how it goes from that stage to speaking with Lucasfilms to uh, get the approval for the idea and kind of the back and forth that they go with that um, and the amount of work that goes with working with them to uh, in order to get a product that works um, to go into the production phase, into getting a design for a model, uh, getting approval for that particular process, and then going into mass production to labeling and then to finally marketing uh, all the test play that goes internally, then external testing, um, and then finally into production to be placed out and put out as a, pro uh, as a product out there for the game. You know, they said that at minimum, it does take them two years in order for, the, for a single expansion to go through all that that testing and work that needs to be done uh, for the game toward, in order for them to, to go forward. So everything that we're seeing now that's coming out, in, uh, namely the um, the TIE Bomber, the YT-2400 that's coming out, this is stuff that was in the works back in 2021. Um, and now that we have the gunboats coming out uh, early next year, that is something that has been working since last year, since 2022. So, you know, it does take quite a bit of time for them to, um, to go through all that process in order for them to get approval for that and stuff. The other part of it, too, is... You know, you got to take a look at Star Wars content. You know, as of recently, we've had uh, a number of different shows that's uh, that's featured different um, pilots or characters um, that could eventually transition into the game. You know, namely uh, Mando uh, being able to fly the um, and spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen Mando season two or three, uh, but him piloting uh, the Nubu N one Starfighter. You know, that is a ship that uh, that or a pilot that we want to see for the Nubu. Um, that will probably go into scum. Um, but in order for them to make that, most likely that's going to be a card pack, which has to be balanced, which has to get approval from Lucasfilm. And that's going to take a while. So, um, and they, they don't want to release just a pack that's just going to have just that one pilot. You know, they want to get a lot of different pilots in order for it to make it a worthwhile pack. But each piece in that pack does go through that whole process um, in order for them to get approval. Um, so while it may seem slow uh, from our perspective on our end, um, it is uh, something that just takes time in order for them to perfect and balance and make sure that they, get, they could get right when it comes released. So, so all right. So we, as we as we're shifting over into the the AMG interview, right with with three one two. Some of <clears throat> some so some, some of the history is great, right? You know, like understanding you know some of their concepts to it. Did they talk about card packs being less time intensive than developing a new ship? <laughs> They did not specifically state that, no. They did like the idea of having, and they did talk about a bit about standardized cards uh, being able to be introduced into the game to make it easier for newer players to come in without having to worry about a bunch of other upgrades being added onto that pilot. It's just a simple place on the board play, and they're balanced with the scenario packs that they came in, namely the Battle of Yavin pack or the Battle Coruscant pack, and being something that they've wanted to implement into the game in order to attract new players and um and their philosophy behind it and to that extent I, I definitely agree for the game i know that for our locals uh we've definitely introduced or encouraged people to get uh like the starter packs and try out like those those particular scenarios so that way they can get used to the rules of the game without having to really dive deep dive into the competitive aspects or uh like starting out with some of the more complicated scenarios like salvage or scramble um and it really helps for those newer players to really to get used to like uh the grasping for the flow of the game for how uh ships move and the attack portion of it but as far as the 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 length of time it takes for them to produce like pilot cards for it i would assume it's it might be a shorter production time again they didn't really specify it but they still have to um Anytime that they're going to make a newer card uh, with any type of change to the pilot's ability, even if it's a pilot that they already have, um, it is a process that has to go through Lucasfilm and they have to get approval from Lucasfilm for each individual pilot that they're going to introduce in that pack. <clears throat> Which makes sense time-wise. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, did, I did a little bit. Um, <coughs> um <laughs> So I think though, 
so I guess Nick answered it in the chat, but for, for the, the listening audience, did they talk about if standard loadout cards are going to be the new norm? And <clears throat> I see with the white T4 2400, we could probably guarantee that they're not, except for we didn't see it with scum, right? And so did they, A, did they talk a little bit about the scum piece of why they only did standard loadout for white T2400? Um, and are we going to see some of those those things going forward? Well, unfortunately, they um, they didn't go into specifics for any of the newer packs that are being released. Now, I do want to um, kind of give a little bit of, of context for the interview. The interview has been recorded over a month ago, so a lot of the information that they're talking about then was stuff that wasn't released um, to the public at the time. Um, you know, they make a reference to a possibility of an E-Wing being the background in the original Soka trailer, um, and that's before the newer one shows out that that definitely shows that that was an e-wing in the in the background for that second trailer for ahsoka for instance so they they talked about it mainly on a high level without going to details for specific packs that are coming out like the tie bomber or the uh yt2400 so they they spoke in general terms for um how they've uh they plan to uh, introduce or use standard loadout cards um going forward in the game Which makes sense, right? <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I, I think I still think AMG has a dislike for scum. Um, like that's, <laughs> that's what this feels like a little bit sometimes. Um, <laughs> you know, and that would have been a good question. Um, do they address their dislike of scum at all? I did jokingly. <laughs> that, that's why they hate scum. Okay. <laughs> No, but I mean, I was there. They're constantly looking, you know, when they when they talked about, you know, um, like things that they would look out for to like introduce into the game. They're always constantly looking to the newer Star Wars media that's been coming out, um, you know, namely a lot of the newer shows that have been coming out or some of the future movies that will be coming out and taking a look at, you know, particular ships or pilots that are introduced into there. And, you know, they hope that, you know, with enough interest in those particular pilots that can help drive the development cycle for them to be able to eventually translate them into the game um you know which means that hopefully within the new future we are going to see e-wings again uh come into standard play um and uh and hopefully a, a little bit more you know we'll see what the ahsoka series brings up there but it's good to know that you know amg is taking a look at a lot of the newer media and using that inspiration for what they show on there to uh design those pilots for the game um in a way that uh, that adds on to the game without having to break it um they did go on in quite a bit of like the process for uh what it takes to develop a pilot without having to break the card and that's kind of one of the reasons why they went to standard loadouts because they wanted to be able to bring a version of the pilot that they want to design uh with the loadouts that they want to design without having to break the rest of the faction or every other factions mm -hmm. with brand new upgrades or interactions that would you know make the game unbalanced um so having that flexibility of having a customized pilot versus a standard loadout pilot they're able to do like give the best of both worlds with that yeah it kind of seemed like in the scum one there's like well it's always been a rebel ship and scum just got two pilots for bonus free kind of thing and you probably shouldn't have either of those being a customizable pilot in Scum because you could get really degenerate combos, like I mentioned with Kira, with Dash, or you know, even more IG Eleven stuff with with Lebo and things like that. So I can see why they would just be a standardized loadout. Well, and I guess if they're not going to go to only standardized loadouts, I, I you know, I think. I think that preserves a little bit of the game that we love, right? You know, like I can't imagine you giving me a standardized dirt because if one day I want to run proton cannons and the next day I want to run um, sync laser, I, I want the option to make that decision for 10 points. Um, if you think about it, we do have some standardized loadout cards kind of like, like that's, you know, Luke was pretty easily built a certain way. People Grievous last, last point yeah. update. Grievous yeah. the same way, you know. <clears throat> so I think there's 
the, those do exist. Actually, I think did you make me? Somebody made me a grievous standardized loadout card without maneuver on it. I have it. If they ever give it back, it wasn't me, but I know someone was <laughs> like trying to do that. Yeah, somebody <laughs> made one and gave it to me. I think at Adepticon. I think it was at Adepticon. Somebody that gave one to right. me, and like I, so I have it, and I, I carried it until they changed the points. Like I played with it. You know, it was cool. I was like, yeah, here, just look. <laughs> I like the customizable point aspect. One, because I love building lists. And two, I love having the option for my opponent to really bring poor things to the lists. It really helps out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you tie with them intentionally in the first run. Yeah, Bold mean, you strategy. Do that, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> there was a possibility like that we both went undefeated and just wrecked the entire bracket. Like nothing would have made sense. Like it, it would just been a complete disaster. I was here for it. It was great. <laughs> you guys got to do it the last round then. <clears throat> Not round one. <laughs> well, it defeats the fun of it. Um, yeah. Uh, so the other and... part, some of the stuff that I caught with it was OP stuff, right? I heard, like, on my way, I was listening to a little bit of it on my way home, but I didn't get all of it in. Um, and so some of it, they were talking about OP stuff, right? You know? Um, so let's, I guess let's, let's, let's transition into that piece of it outside of the development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that, uh, that Will was talking about on this, uh, on the interview was, you know, their, 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 their reaction to how the community has received uh, the return of the OP. Uh, one of the anecdotes that they were talking about was um, was during the the finals at Worlds, where you know there's just a mass gathering of all these people excited for how the the final uh, the final game was going on at Worlds, and they hear all this uh, yelling and excitement for the the last roll off, you know, for the road roll. And you know, Will was at the AMG booth about a hundred yards away, and he got up from his seat to go check it out and he just sees you know the, the final roll off and everybody just talking about it and just getting really really excited of it and you know it just made them very happy to see this level of excitement from all the players for this game and he got to uh you know got to share with a lot of people um their thoughts about the changes to the game and you know how they liked some of the changes how they didn't like some of the changes and they took that into um into really good consideration and they're really happy that um that the store champs uh, mm -hmm. and organized play are back for the game because it has really uh, helped revive the interest in the competitive aspect of uh, of X-Wing and they're they're excited for that portion of the game and they want to continue help nurture it by providing you know as many events as possible um, for more and more people to make it out to um, to Adepticon uh, for next worlds and have a see a lot more players they were very happy for the very high turnout of players for the last world's qualifier uh right before worlds and um they, they're just happy to see the the overwhelming positive uh reception for the people wanting to get into the competitive side of x-wing and going out and playing well i think that's you know right that's necessary and, and so so i think there and there again we can sit down you know as much as we criticize and say hey you know amg doesn't know how to have conversation appropriately if if I I had left before the final game because I had to get back for something for my daughter, but they um I was there until ten thirty eleven. I watched a couple of games, um, <clears throat> that Sunday. But the big thing is is he's listening, right? You know, which translates into they listen, whether they agree with us or not. They're at least listening, you know, like. They listen to our podcast all the time, I'm sure. Um, actually, they, they've actually mentioned um, uh, they, they mentioned that they've gone into the discords. They've, you know, gone to the communities. They've seen different podcasts. You know, they see the reaction to people, how they play, you know, online to different stuff. Um, they, they are actively going on and taking a look at it. And they actually said a uh, thank you to all the podcasters to, you know, to mention the game and keep the game alive going and, you know, broadcast and talk about the game um so that was a very nice shout out from amg to all of the podcasters who cover x-wing um but uh, you know it's nice to know that you know they're just like us they 
they are very involved with the game. They actively look for games online. They like to hear what the community is doing online. And, you know, they, they do listen to people like us who talk about the game and have a, a, a good conversation about, you know, what's, what's going good, what's going bad with the game and try to, you know, help guide them for the future of the game. But you know how they listen, they, how, how we know they at least have listened to a couple episodes of our podcast. <clears throat> They fuck Corkle Mux. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Like, like, I'm sorry. Like I, no one else cares except for me, I guess, about Torkel Mux. So like, so I can officially claim again that I got the B wings nerfed. Yeah, I got, I got to say, it was me and my seventh fleet gunner, and dedicated exactly. <laughs> And Grand Inquisitor crew, honestly, right there. That's the only one. No <laughs> one, no one played that, that but crew me. Ever, ever. We've never talked about that crew. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, Alex, I think you need to go to a store champ and win with that crew just to, like, spite them and he's see if they really raise the right? cost to, like, 17. <laughs> like, he's still scary. Like, you just put him on rack. He does whatever he wants. Yeah. Have uh-huh. your rack take whatever actions he needs. <clears throat> so I guess... I don't want to spend too much more time, you know, with their interview. Um, I think you can go listen to the interview on three, one, two, like we're not here to recap and give you, you know, the play by play, just go watch the thing. I think the big question that I had gotten and that I had started to see is, Oh my gosh, what are they doing to X wing? Are they going to get rid of X wing? You know, like the, do- the doom patrol came out and that's that. Like if you haven't watched that show, by the way, you should watch that show. It's actually a really good show. But um, th- that's kind of what it felt like. And if you, like after watching that show on HBO, it's on HBO. Yeah, it's on HBO. Yeah. You know, after watching it, like I kind of understand and like feel like when these people go online and everybody, like I get everybody's so passionate about the game. And I and I I I, I, I am the same way. Um, we've had we have a segment where we talk about what Tanner hates. Um, so I can't say that I'm not the same way. But I think what we need to do is we all need to take a step back and a breath back, and we need to continue to reiterate, hey, AMG, you could probably do a little bit better um, in your conversations with people. <laughs> you could do a little bit better in how you communicate throughout the, the interwebs. But overall, they are listening, A, and we aren't seeing the death of the game. Like, this is not, like, the death of the game. And I think we in two more years, maybe we could be a little bit more worried if we don't get a bunch of new ships. Um, or any new ships at all, I think at that point maybe we can have that conversation again, but I think we need to give them some time to flush that piece of it out, right? Like, <clears throat> do we really need a T-80? I, I'm, I'm just asking. Do you, yes. do you really need one? Okay, yes. JJ, you're, a, you're off the podcast. Huh? And a but, Resistance but B-Wing. And the Tide Dorito. And the Tide Echelon. We need those, because the sequel factions need to be more fleshed out, man. Come on. What about Scum? They hate Scum. Everybody. Scum has chips we're we're okay it's remember crazy. the scum op support <laughs> yeah. they got this this uh the store kit champs yeah remember how they had lapping right on the back of the box you know what they don't include in the op kits anymore any scum anything yeah i guess yeah. they have triple zero <laughs> for only the tournament organizers exactly <laughs> scum players don't play they just to they exist <laughs> they come in second that's what they do or they start playing rebel they should just switch the separatists, but yeah, because I, mean, I, I hear that all the time. Scum. That's what I hear all the time. Separatists is nothing but scum. But any, anyway, do you guys have any last thoughts before we transition into our store champ, you know, pattern analyzer uh, segment? Uh, the only thing I just want to reiterate is just you know, um, it, it's just it's nice to hear these type of interviews uh, from AMG. Just really getting to hear their. Um, their reasoning, their rationale between this, uh, behind the decisions that they make for the game. And it's, it's, although as much as, as a player, as a fan of the game, as a competitive player, as much as sometimes we want to have uh, changes made to the game for our favorite pilots or wanting to see our favorite characters from a show that we just like watched uh, come out there, you know, there is a process in play. They are thinking about it. They're always in process of doing it, but they also don't want to, rush that into into the game and then break the game and then you know just make it worse for everybody so you know just gotta 
trust the process a bit. It's not as fast as we would like to do, but they're always working to, um, you know, make the game better because it turns out they are fans of the game and they've been playing the game since 1.0. Um, so it's, um, it's always good to have uh, fans of the game be creators for the game and, sh- and help develop the game. Yeah, and sometimes no news is not bad news. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and I think that's, you know, I think that, I think you're right there. I think that's that's the thing is the, the Doom Patrol comes out and <clears throat> starts making people nervous. And I think originally when they first took over, we had a, a lot more to be concerned about. But here we are two years in. I do agree there's changes to still make, um, especially to, for Scum. But it does mean that they are still caring about the game. So, um, so anyway, if you have not checked out the 312 Squadron um, interview, my recommendation is head on over there, check it out this week. Um, maybe we'll touch on it again next week. Um, but really, I think the big thing is just, just go watch the interview and kind of make your own decisions. And you can bitch about it in the Discord if you want. That's fine with me. Um, <laughs> we'll let JJ moderate it and answer everybody's Discord. There you go. Bombard the Discord and and tag JJ. JJ will answer every every question you post in the Discord this week because he ain't got shit to do this week. So um, <laughs> for one week, JJ will answer all of your important X Wing or non X Wing questions. All right, why don't we head over? Let's do our pattern analyzer segment. All right, here we are back. My picture's gone, but don't worry about it. I'm not that cute. So, all right. So the first store champ we're going to cover, and and I guess here you go. Let me preface this. If you don't know what our pattern analyzer segment is, it's where we take all of the local store champs and tournaments, kind of break them down, talk about them. If it's only a store champ, we're only covering the top list winner and the list, another list that did decently well that we found interesting. Um, I'm going to break the rules for this one and we're going to cover Alex's list too, <clears throat> but I might, should I just change it up and force JJ to read Alex's list instead of him? You should force JJ to explain what my list does in detail. All right. All right. <laughs> there you go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. We're doing so this it. This is a very Alex list. Um, All right, cool. But you got to wait though. You're, we got, we're going to go over the other list first and then, <laughs> okay. and then you get to. Good players go first. Yes. <laughs> the um, people who actually won things. Now, how about this? I will say, Alex, I went back and just looked at the SOS real quick. I don't know how it changes if you didn't take the draw, but you t- you actually had won that. But you still would have came in seventh with your SOS numbers. Oh, yeah, my SOS was <laughs> hot like, garbage. Like, I was like, all right, well, that sucks. Like, because if it had, like, I went and looked, I was like, maybe it comes in at two. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, you would jump all the way up. You would be, you know, in fourth I played place. the two no. people who didn't win anything in that tournament. One guy had the buy. That's his win. So... Um, anyway, anyway, <clears throat> so the, so Sam page won another store championship this time it's with sort non- of, I mean, they didn't play the last game. It was Nate and Sam. They um, both were four and oh, and they were just like, we don't care. <laughs> and they just left basically. Yeah. Cause I, I heard they both had store champ invite wins right. already. And unfortunately it went to the people in Canada so it left the state, so it doesn't trickle down better for us. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, because Sean, what came in? Sean from my locals is the one that came in fourth place, um, <clears throat> and Sean would have gotten his store invite, and then he could play it and run whatever he wants, and then ruin the rest of our list by doing something crazy, stupid that would be like a direct counter to something one of us would run. That's what would have <laughs> happened. <laughs> Um, but congratulations again to Sam Page. This is the second one that he has taken down. Um, so hopefully he'll be, because I don't think Sam was at Adepticon this year, was he? No, he was. He was scrubbed he? out in the LCQ. Did he? Okay. Yep. I say I don't remember. He must not have said hi to me. So I don't remember seeing Sam originally there. Anyway, so um, congratulations to Sam with the first place. The winner had a Darth Vader, the new Empire standard loadout. The SSP is, I guess, what they're calling it. Yeah. Starter Squadron Pack. Ugh, I don't like that. 
But okay, cool. That's what it says on the box. <clears throat> I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't I don't like that. Anyway, so it's a new Darth Vader. Then Volt Scarus with Ruthless and Shield Upgrade. Lieutenant Lurier with Crack Shot and Targeting Computer. Then Tomex Bren, uh, the standard loadout one. We don't even have to go through it. And Captain Faroff with Ion Limiter Override Captain Hark and Targeting Computer. Do those things not natively have a target lock action? No, no they, they don't. do not. Mm -mm. Ah. Also, I spoke with him. He said he literally has never used Calvaris, uh, Vault Scarus' ability ever. <laughs> <laughs> he's there because he's an I-5 interceptor. Yeah, which makes sense, right? I mean, like, and it's nice to see interceptors on the board and do decently, right? I think that's that's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I kind of like the list. JJ, you, the fair off here. Is this like what you would run? I know you like Vizier better, so, but this I four I think fits in this list a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I I do like the uh, ion limiter override for Faroff because you could essentially uh, do a on a um, on a Talon or not a Talon on a Sloop. You can do the ion limiter override barrel roll and also do Captain Hark for a focus. Um, so that puts Faroff in a really unpredictable place um, for him. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. I'm actually kind of surprised that he didn't use the coordinate for Faroff for Volt Scaris to essentially um, like get him to turn on his ability and then he can activate clear his strength. Us, um and then or clear the strain and then uh take his normal action and then at the start of engagement be able to take a second action into barrel roll or boost um at the start of engagement uh but uh but yeah i mean that's that's it's a really solid list Walt scaris can be really good if you play him well yeah i mean you got an i6 two i5s two i3s so i mean you, at least they're all moving at the same time right yeah and you know Vault Scarus, I, I don't understand how he how he won a store champ with two interceptors in his list, but you know, good way to go, Sam. You did it yeah. again. All right, JJ, or not JJ, Alex. What is the top three in one list that we chose to review? Uh, thanks for the the one that I the only one that I lost to, Sean's list. <laughs> <laughs> it's a six ship rebel list. He has Horton that he loves running with Dorsal and Plasmus, Bodica with Predator, Beskar, Mando Optics, Keo with Lone Wolf Concussion Missiles, and the Vectored Cannons config. Uh, Corn Horn with Swarm Tactics, Magpulse, Thane Kyrell with Prockets, Man of My Heart, and then Sabine with Beskar. In our game, uh, he never could get off Lone Wolf, never shot a Plasma Torp with Horton Psalm. Uh, and Sabine was out of the game entirely. Add that up as you will to see how silly of a game it was. <laughs> <laughs> what was your scenario? Uh, salvage. Okay. Now, I will say I like the choice of Vector Cannons here. I like that. A, I think it's very daring. I know you don't like it. I don't care, though. I like it. <laughs> I think it's fun. It's a fun thing. You don't get to use Kyo's ability. Like, it'd still have an action. I mean, you could choose not to use it, right? Right, but then you, <laughs> then you just don't have a boost. Like it's just You could choose not to use it, then it's just a worthless upgrade, right? Yeah, true, yeah. I, I mean, like, it's cool that you can, like, do a red boost and then do, like, a side slip, but you're not getting any actions. Yeah, exactly, you're not getting any actions. Yeah. And you have the Force and Lone Wolf, I guess, but... Yeah, that's true. Also, the first thing he did was pick up a crate with Keo. So I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> You're never using any of that. Um, I do like uh, Thing Kyrell, though, with Proton Rockets. I mean, at I-5 yeah. and the X-Wing's ability to, with the with their foils closed, be able to do the focus uh, boost. Uh, you can actually get that uh, that procket off pretty reliably at I-5 with an X-Wing. And that's, a, that's quite a bit of spike damage there. Uh, but, you know, Thane's ability is a plus if you happen to be unmodded or jam. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely really nice to get that five die shot there from Thane. We traded Prockets. Well, we traded Protons, I guess I should say. He shot the Procket at me. I shot the Proton Cannon at him. Nice. I was just say, like, if feels good, 
you to have that pocket on him, it's like a different dirge. Like that's what I ran on Thane. When I ran Thane, yeah. it was a pocket. But I also ran pocket on corn, so I mean if you set yourself up if you set yourself up right, right, with corn, you know, you can have that target lock uh from Thane, and then when you get that shot that you're gonna shoot that pocket off, you can get that uh you have corn engaged first, get the target lock there, and then you have a double modded pocket shot from Thane at I five. Yep. Yeah, it's good. All right. The list that claims to be three and one, but is really two one and one. <laughs> JJ. Two one and one did... that played their tie game out. <laughs> JJ, what it did Alex bring? So we got Lee Makai with Plasma and Torpedoes, R4, uh, B11. Uh, we have Cad Bane with Marksmanship, Proton Cannons, Contraband Cybernetics, the title, and Lots of Razi. Can you tell me uh, what R4, B11 does, JJ? That's the reroll droid. When you perform an attack, you can reroll, and if it, uh, if you roll a crit, you suffer damage. That's R5, P8. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. That is R5, P8. What does he do? R4B11 lets you pull an orange or a red token off your opponent to re-roll their defense dice as many as you want. Okay. Uh, so I'll come back to that because I do have a question on that. So uh, Bosk uh, in the Z95, I'd imagine, with uh, marksmanship and expert handling. Uh, Manaru with expert handling, Gar Saxon Gunner, Contraband Cybernetics, Punishing One, and the R5P8. Yeah, that's the reroll droid. Uh, and then Dr. Afro with Triple Zero, uh, Lando Carrizian, Dengar, Contraband Cybernetics, uh, Deadman Switch, Electronic Baffle, and Hounds to, to round off that list there. So if I'm reading this correctly, uh, you would reinforce with Ephra, and then if they're in range, you triple zero them. If they give you a calculate, that's, you know, Lando fodder, um, or they gain a stress. And then at that point, that's where uh, that's where Lee Mackay's ability with the R4B11 comes in, right? Yes. Or if you natty out, you just find your own target lock. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah or you fair. do what I did to an unfortunate boy, Luke. Where he regen with R2D2, and I just pulled off his weapons and said, well, force him to reroll his defense dice and killed him. Was it after it was their opportunity to uh -huh. shoot too? Oh, that's. <laughs> and it was obstructed. I just wiped it right off the board. Oh my God. Twice. That is nasty. I like that. Oh man. See, scum can be competitive, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. Also, Cad Bane can pass out stress tokens. That's right. Yep. Also, Cad Bane. R4B11, other target locks that you take on yeah, your actions because I've taken a lot of target locks with boss yeah. so I could re-roll it with Lima. Yeah, I gotta say the Lots Razi combo on Cad Bane, I'm starting to like that more and more. Um being able to get those extra evades um with Lots Razi uh is really, really nice with Cad Bane's ability. I definitely like it a lot. You also have two large base ships and one of them can perma stop with electronic baffles so Rack never can get behind her. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then Rack's always stressed, and you're just proton ganning Rack until they die. Yep, exactly. And also all those red tokens you can pull off with Manaru with Gar Saxon Gunner. It's it's, uh, it's really silly. Also, nice. Lando. Lando is spend a green token to re-roll dice you just rolled. You can do that in your Dangar Gunner die. Because yeah. you roll the Dangar Gunner die. Yeah, so if I that's really good. This is, this, is why, this is why they they hate scum. Jesus, oh, my God. <laughs> oh there's so many things in this list Let's that is on. so silly. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <clears throat> I'm done. Glad you didn't. Actually, I wish you had won that store champ, Alex. That way, it would just have been something we could just shoved in everybody's well, People face. would have talked about it, and they're going to be like, "I don't know what this guy did." Uh, but that list has like a, an alarming amount of offense. It's super fun. I love this list. It's one of the most fun lists I've ever played. Okay. And that Deadman switch gained me like five points on chance engagement. Wow. Because <laughs> he was by me and he was like one away from half on all of his ships. All right. On to the next store champ at Zool's game in Washington. Uh, they had a similar situation with two four and o's um the second seed player actually won and i did look to see if they played each other in the final round and they did not obviously um so there is that so the winner that came up was a agent Terex list right 
Yeah, that's interesting. Um, with Captain Phasma back, we got Captain Phasma back. Is was this extended? Did they move Captain Phasma to? No. No, you're thinking of uh, Commander Pyre. Oh, Pyre. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite Destiny cards. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. Now, now we're going to. Let's not get into Destiny. Uh, so they had Malaris with the cluster missiles, quick draw with Predator. <laughs> Predator. Um, this I, uh, That's an Alex thing, I guess, there, right? That's Just bullseye pretty ballsy. <laughs> Those things don't boost. <laughs> Just bullseye them. Well, it's fine. Um, Proud Tradition, Pattern Analyzer, Special Forces Gunner, and FCS. So I'm assuming you're taking target locks your first round. If they shoot you, you are able to have extra mods. Um, each they give you bullseye and get the fire control system. That's like that is two dice. So I mean, I'd say that's probably pretty good. Um, getting that bullseye might be easier than I think it is. I don't know. It, it seems hard with that stupid. I mean, with with Han in the game being present, uh, I mean, you're you're facing off more large bases and medium bases, and it's easier for those small bases to get that bullseye, especially at I six against those large bases. So it'll come up a lot more often than you think. So fair enough. Uh, then they made from Terex too, for like a focus. Then you can roll into like a bullseye. Yeah, yeah. Then they have Terex with Phasma. FTC and Contraband, Midnight with Squad Leader and Dead Eye Shot, and I guess I did not look through this list because I told somebody earlier don't run Dead Eye Shot on Django. Um, I still see. I think I'm still going to stand by that. I think I'm still going to stand by that. But Dead Eye Shot on Midnight, I don't know. It's I. I wonder how often it got off. Is what I would like to know. It's one point. Well, yeah. The other part of it too is that if you're coordinating and you don't have a token, you know, it, you only get a bonus from Dead Eye Shot. Or if you're locking them and you don't want to spend the lock, spend like the focus thing. Yeah, true. Because Midnight's ability. It makes sense. And then Kylo Ren with Malice, Compassion, Predator, Concussion Missile, Sensor Jam, and Enhanced Jamming Suite. Um, so kind of a, a salad-ish list. Um, do you coordinate with Terex each time? Is that what they're doing? I wonder what twice? He, which ship he put the false transponder codes on. I would assume it'd be like quick draw, right? Or it could be like Malaris. That'd be fun. Malaris rolls up, target locks you, jams you, pops Malaris's ability. Yeah, double that seems cluster. Good. Yeah, and then the contraband can go on, like Kylo. That'd be pretty good use of contraband there. Yeah, yeah. Well, or Terrace himself. Well, he can't put it on Kylo. Out. Actually, it's the FOs or the SF, so it's got to be either. You can uh, you can keep contra- you can keep contraband on Terex and do a full stop coordinate. You could. Be fun. Yeah. And I think the FTC probably it, it picks which one you 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 get to pick which one you want. So based on how it's because it's after setup, right? It's after yep. setup you make after that placing your forces. Yeah. So yeah, it, I think that's that's what you know, like oh okay, you put everybody to joust, you know, Malaris or Joust quick draw. Here you go, quick draw somebody you, you get to you get a free jam. Free jam for you, buddy. You could put up midnight, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I like the I mean, list. They can't I, mod it anyway, so yeah. I like I like the list. I think um, I th- I do like the list. I do think this is a little bit different take. Um, I've never seen Terex ran in the wild and you outside never of will online. After. Huh? And you never will after this. So, <laughs> um, cool, I guess. I don't know. It it's it's an interesting pick because usually you you wouldn't because midnight has kind of become the coordinator in that list right and i don't know i don't know if you need two coordinators but coordinate the coordinator yeah true it worked very well for him so the next list is a three one list from echo seven alex your favorite pilot is in this list tell us about it it's got my boy lando with the only loadout i would ever imagine running with him nine of perceptive co-pilot in bistan and the title it's got procket keo which is great with that lando it has a hair on the B wing though, with suppressive gunner, ion cannon, and marksmanship, and then boy Luke. Uh, that's uh, that's an interesting Hera. I've never seen that before. 
Yeah, yeah, this one is is definitely like a control hero, right? Because you can um, do your primary shot, and um, if you have a lock on the opponent, you can uh, then spend it to take an ion cannon shot, and you got the suppressive gunner uh, mark uh, on there with uh, marksmanship uh, to to help uh, really cripple a particular ship uh, ahead of time, and then you got follow up shots from Luke and Lando um, to to hopefully uh, weaken or further weaken or destroy the ship that Hera initially engaged. And if the ion cannon hits and you're able to ionize a target, that's a target lock that that opponent loses on a ship. Um, so that's uh, that's that's could be potentially good. Well, the hilarious thing too is that suppressive gunners just after you attack. So if mm -hmm. you do double tap, you can trigger suppressive twice if you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they get double depleted or deplete damage, double damage, as long as you roll eyeball results. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. How about this? I like this as a variation of what we have been seeing. It's still stupid that we have Bistan perceptive, but you know. I think we talked about Lando Neonub before they made the points changes. I think that was like a discuss. That was a discussion. I'm pretty sure we had. Oh, it's always um, been like stapled to the card. Yeah, it is a so, co-pilot. Yeah, I would say I, th I think we had that conversation on our show about that. So. Yeah, but this perceptive co-pilot Bistan shot, you can target lock and then shoot him with with the focus Bistan thing because you Lando and you do two actions, so you do lock as lock and then focus to hold the focus left over for the second shot. So why are people not running this more than... Because Han is I-6. Okay. It's literally it. I prefer Lando, but... I'm, yeah. I'm a team player kind of guy. And and not to to uh, you know go back too far, but you know that's something that AMG did discuss in terms of you know you know the um, the cycle for when they decide to do adjustments for like points and stuff is you know when they take a look at the meta and there needs to be any balance changes they wanted to run for a full season so that way the meta can be fully flushed out and thought you know they don't want to change it every few months because it. It's just too soon to really see what people come up with. And honestly, you know, when you take a look at these lists, these are combos that um, that are present, that are available, that people just haven't given it a shot or to see if it's really viable. Um, or they, they come up as responses to things that they've been seeing flown uh, more regularly, like, you know, Han Gunner, for instance, or uh, Han Pilot for the Rebels, for instance. And, you know, this is something that could be very, very good at I6, being able to give out the plea on opponents and as well as you know with the ion cannon combo on top of that i mean this is it's really good i mean this hera is a really really good control piece and you can focus lock with hera because you have lando in it yep so you can get the actual mods for your for your shots with hera mm -hmm. all right next door champ gigabytes georgia we had a rabid winner with with a five X wing list, went four and zero. Ended up winning in the cut against a corn horn. <laughs> okay. corn horn. Uh, that's funny. Corn horn who didn't fly corn horn. Who did not fly corn horn <laughs> at all? <laughs> so uh, tragic. So it's not it's not standard legal yet, guys. <laughs> uh, the X wing one is. <laughs> Oh yeah, true. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, so yeah, he's ran the resistance list here. We got five X wings here. We got Nimi Shireen with uh, Prockets and Munitions Failsafe, Justin oh, yeah. Kava with R two D two, uh, and Jammy Bean, Venisa Doza with a Barrage Rockets and Marksmanship, uh, Temin Wexley with HLC and R sixty eight, and Elo Atzi with Jamming Bean, and Jamming Beam and M nine G eight to round off this list. Uh, definitely a really really solid five. Uh, T70 list there. Uh, this is a very tough list to go through. Um, it flown very, very well, and uh, they can definitely put out some consistent damage. It's really good. Do you appreciate that he took the jammy beam on Ello instead of like marksmanship? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does Ello have a second talent? Yeah, Ello does. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you take jammy beam then over freaking marksmanship. <laughs> I mean, I get it for like Jess Pava. I get the R2D2 one because R2D2 has four charges instead of like Bucket who has three. Uh, you know, Veniza with the Barrage Rocket's always pretty solid. Snap is a pretty strong combo. And I love Proton Rockets on Nimi. <laughs> like, uh, you have to be really good at 
Yeah, you, here's you know, an I2. Doing it. <laughs> I bullseye things with I2s with rockets. It's not impossible. You just have to work a little bit for it. Uh, but, you know, uh, Nimi is just while well, you perform an attack. So Nimi's ability still triggers with proton rockets. So you can change a blank to a focus result, which is pretty funny. Yeah, yeah it's an, that's an accurate pocket. I mean, honestly, you just set yourself up well with... Um, with uh, setting up, you know, good blocks, and then just have uh, Nimi, you know, just lined up for for that particular block. Especially if you're doing it between like two obstacles, you can get it on pretty. You can get off that pocket pretty reliably. You know, you just have to be a good pilot, or just tell your opponent to joust you, and they do. <laughs> Hit me! <laughs> Hit me! And never spend your focus, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take six damage here, but I'll keep that focus for this pocket shot. Oh, <laughs> uh, you you know that's what I would do, hundred percent. All right, the next list that I found interesting, and I only say because it has Lieutenant Blount in it, I was kind of excited to see that. Um, not the Lieutenant Blount I would run, I guess, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with the shield upgrade. I did not know Lieutenant Blount actually had that many points. I think we must have like bypassed that over. When we did the analysis, right? He moved up from two points, two point changes ago. And then no one ever used them because he's three points and he's a Z95. <laughs> so. But Alex, well, what's in this list? So you have a wing wedge with marksmanship crack shot, Rocket Keo, Arvel with marksmanship crack shot, Sabine with Beskar. Lieutenant Blau with Predator Shield Upgrade. And uh, to finish the six ship list, you have Chopper with Dorsal Saw and Veteran Turret Gunner. So I have to ask a question. Like, would would you just run Snapshot on Lieutenant Blau? Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> he doesn't move. <laughs> it's just like a free BS attack. Can't mod it anyway, right? So. Right. I mean, he's not like. Are you thinking like Kraken, where you get the extra action out of that? No. Oh, Blount just what he does a primary. If there's other people around him, the, the ship that you're shooting gets an extra attack die. I mean, I guess you can do like snapshot, but I don't know that. Then you're putting Blount out there, and that's not where Blount wants to be. All right, fair enough. I just thought it'd be hilarious. Oh. <clears throat> All right. The next one was Battlegrounds in Virginia. This one. Did I have? I don't have the right screen in there, do mm-hmm. I? No, that's Spain. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was Spain that never concluded. Because um, Duncan right. Howard won the one yeah. in Virginia, but I don't know what it, I couldn't look at their list on Longshanks. So I don't know what he was running. So it's right here. This is what he ran. He ran. So he ran the Republic. He ran Republic and he ran build your own wolf with expert handling. That's fair. Veteran tail gunner and R4 P. Then he ran the SOC oddball and then two, (laughs) two Delta sevens, one Delta seven B Anakin. The other one is Adi Gallia. Which he ran Debris Gambit and Chopper on. Yep. And then Anakin with Predator R47 or R4 P17 in Shield Upgrade. Which the Shield Upgrade kind of makes sense, I guess, because you, you only have four ships here. <laughs> so um, I could see it. Yeah. I did not my preferred Luke or Anakin, but I mean. I got to say, I love the combo of Chopper with Debris Gambit. You know, um, for those who don't know, essentially uh, Chopper's native ability is that after you fully execute a maneuver, you can uh, spend one of the charges on Chopper to gain a red evade. Debris Gambit allows you to change that red evade into a white evade if you're near an obstacle. So you're, you're essentially giving Adigalia a free evade token uh, once you, um, if you meet the conditions for it, uh, which is being ranged one of an obstacle there um so she can then uh do uh an extreme maneuvers boost or barrel or sorry not extreme maneuvers a um 
a full throttle um fine tune control fine tune sorry fine tune gosh i can't remember my my stuff today uh fine tune controls barrel boost after that and then focus if you need to or target lock um that gives her a lot of flexibility in the delta seven there um i think that she's great for five points yeah, I was curious if they didn't do it on like Anakin because you could do like chopper debris gambit, like uh, spare parts canister An- Anakin, uh, which is something I've been looking at. <laughs> also, Audigalia, man. Ooh, okay, okay, Duncan, just flex on him. <laughs> I still, I don't know. I would have preferred like he's Obi. on four four star championships right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Audi has the points in order to run chopper debris gambit. Uh, is like Obi Wan doesn't, but Obi Wan also helps out the rest of your list. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess maybe it's like a defensive thing with Audi, right? So you can just deny that range one bonus. Um, I don't, I don't know. It seems solid. I wouldn't run it. <laughs> I don't like double Jedi double arc as like just an archetype. I don't think the arcs last long enough. But I also am not on the skill level, Duncan Howard. So that could be me. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. He was talking about it, I think, in one of the discords. I don't I don't remember which one, but I think he was talking about it in one of the discords. So I mean, there is a write up. I I I don't know. I this is not a Tanner list. We'll just put it that way. So I'm a little confused by this list, and I think. My one of my Jedi would always just die, like it just wouldn't even be a question. Um, he did say he uses three big rocks. You kind of have to with that list, <laughs> especially so, with debris gambit. Uh, if my buddy Richard saw this list, this is like right up his alley. He would do like double supernatural Jedi, and that'd be his list <laughs> in 2.0. So I don't think he plays anymore, though, unfortunately. All right, the other list was a two and two list because the rest of those lists were boring. I'm, I don't apologize. They, they just were whatever. Like they were just standard meta gibberish. But who wants to read the scum list? That is not the same as Alex's so, list, but similar. Lima has to have something else. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say on. Lima. Lima looks like she's incomplete there. Um, so it's probably a, a, a missing upgrade there. But I would just, let's just assume it's plasma torpedoes. Most likely plasma torpedoes. <laughs> I have seen someone on the internet say ion cannon turret. Sure. Um, and I promptly did not listen to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we got Dengar uh, with expert handling, BT1, contraband cybernetics, punishing one in R5 P8. Uh, our Fen Rao with fearless, best guard reinforced plating and burnout thrusters. Lee Makai with an unknown upgrade in R4 B11. And then Old Terok uh, showing up with crack shot, fearless, and best guard reinforced plating to round off the list. This is a really decent high initiative uh, list here. You got two I6s and two I fives there, uh, being able to uh, definitely push in some damage there, uh, particularly with Fenrir and Dengar, and then Old Terak um, can be a menace if uh, if flown correctly. So uh, definitely a solid list there. I mean, I guess Lima could also have concussion missiles. That's the thing. Oh yeah, that's true. Concussion. Yeah. So this is where I got a little confused. They look like they're in the middle of a top four. So I was confused by that. So we're just going to call John Dabbs list the, the list that won, I guess. Sure. I, I don't know. Does it, it? I don't know. Maybe I don't think Nick's on anymore, but I don't know. If somebody knows like why the top cut never happened for this tournament, that would be great because I sure as heck do not understand it. Um, yeah. Anyway, so the top list is um it's pretty close to sam's list yeah there so for this one is the backstabber and mauler and volt yeah it's boy backstabber boy mauler starter vader vault scaris again <laughs> with ruthless and shield upgrade and then uh to max with saturated salo barrage rockets a bomb generator you got four i5s and an i6 and pretty interesting ships 
Um, then the top unique one that I kind of picked out from there uh, was a six ship rebel, or I'm sorry, six ship republic list with three arcs, all the SOC arcs you can have. Uh, click with Alex's favorite upgrade dedicated R3 precision ion engines and the S title. Um, did they purposely put the S title? Yeah, on here? Yes. Bash is one point. So if you have Bash on there, you don't get precision ion engines. You have to take something like Saint Council, which is okay. almost completely useless on click. Yeah, because you, yep. But you should be taking the Bash title anyways. <laughs> Uh, so then you have Broadside with an Ion Cannon Turret, Proton Bombs, and Slider with Dedicated. The list needs one more Dedicated. That's it, right, Alex? One more. I'll give them Oddball has Selfless, so there's there's a way of kind of mitigating something there. There you go. Sure. Um, so I kind of like this list. It's a little different list. I do say this is definitely a unique list um, out of all of it, so... All right, the last store champ that we're going to cover tonight is Around the Table. I don't know where this one was from. Washington? I think this is from Washington. I yeah, believe it's not right. it is. Um, so here we have the exact same, the winner with the exact same list, except for this one's Boy Vader <laughs> and Juno Eclipse. Yeah, with Juno Pazza instead Sensors. of Vault, which makes so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> ruthless and baffle yep so i mean i don't know this I, I, yeah I don't, this is this cool i like it it's a little different um, yeah this one this one feels a lot more um more offensive minded uh versus the other one i mean don't get me wrong uh Volskaris is a, a tiny interceptor with three dice that can go in and and just do some damage there but you know boy vader is probably the most accurate out of the vaders <sighs> And having Backstar, Fire, and Mauler, um, you know, fly by themselves, they're able to give each other three dice for attack. And then Tom McSpren being that um, that annoying Sat Salvo Barrage rocket ship and Juno Eclipse uh, also being able to uh, move after activation uh, or rather move during the engagement phase when she engages with passive sensors is, uh, is pretty nice there. So um, I feel like you can definitely be a lot more aggressive with this list. Um, than the other versions. The other version of this list feels a lot more objective-minded, particularly with the SSP Vader uh, that can take extra actions uh, with the Force. So it just depends on what you're trying to go for here. Um, this one just feels like it just kills things a lot quicker. Or they don't own the starter pack. That as well, <laughs> like me. <laughs> so the next three in one list, Alex... What is this? What is this weird, scummy? I don't even know. I run. I get the thread tracers. I get it. I get it. But at the exact same token, like, yeah, just kill that ship. (laughs) I mean, that's most of the things in this game. Um, So this is an eight ship list. It is CIS, unsurprisingly. It's DGS 047 with Kraken. And the config, the iron assembler with energy shell charges, munitions fail safe, and struts, two hard shell prototypes with energy shell charges and struts, a DFS 081 with thread tracers and struts, and three bombardment drones with cluster mines and delayed fuses and struts. This is not the first time we've seen bombardment drones with cluster mines. And I'm still surprised and baffled by that. Well, you can't take proxy mines anymore, so... I I mean, I understand why they have to take it. I just... It's auto... It's kind of auto damage. It's easier than dropping a bomb. I mean... Near them. (laughs) I mean... I rock. Honestly, I think that cluster mines have a, have a higher ceiling of damage. You know, you have the potential for six damage if it all goes well um, with those rolls there. But um, I mean, I I would like to see what it won against because I think this is a, a list that actually has some legs that could potentially challenge Han. You give you cut off the avenues for Han to escape, and all of a sudden Han starts taking en- energy shell charges, uh, starts taking. Uh, shots from different other ships since he can't boost out of arcs. Um, 
But here, I can get to that side of the board first. Yeah, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Here's Han, right? Here's the droid swarm coming. Here's Han going four straight boost. Well, I, you don't, you can't rush with this list in there, right? Because you're, you're taking up, you're sending up your, your vultures to land on the rocks, which Han wants to be on the rocks, and then you're corralling him with the bombardment drones. You start laying out your cluster mines in areas that Han will eventually have to go into, and then Han has to make a choice. You, he either goes through the mines, or he has to go into the the death box that you're going to set up with the rest of your drones. And on top of that, since they're on the rocks, they're able to claim the objectives more easier. And Han has to spend his his action to to boost or claim an objective. Um, so he if he decides to go for the objective, um, he's probably not going to get the double focus uh, for the double piston shot. Um, or he's spending his his um, his boost to try to get out of multiple arcs, and yeah, he does have the Han reroll, but at the same time, having mods is is usually better than not having mods. So, what if he just plows over the rocks that you said the droids on? I uh, hopefully he clears it and doesn't bump them. Um, because if he bumps that bombardment drone, uh, yeah, he's going to be eating a proc or a cluster mine. <laughs> the whole thing, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like Han takes out any list with Han would probably take out two to three droids. Well, like on the opening engagement. Opening engagement, you can at minimum ace or have point two of those. Like no questions. It and like yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna run the thread tracers on only one ship, I guess at least that ship has the ability to turn crits down. But at the same token, I'm telling you right now, like, if that ship is able to fire at Han Thread Tracers, if it is, then that means Han's going to target that ship first. No questions asked. It's not even going to be a discussion point. You just shoot yeah. a proton torpedo at it with Luke. Or that. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, yep. again, I, I will not discount that I do think Droid Swarm's do have some legs. I did play a little bit around with them at the beginning of the points and then promptly stopped. Um, <laughs> but I won't say, I mean, if this is the list you've been running for a while, like, I mean, this is somewhat close to what I, I had put together, in fairness. Uh, except for one of the Barbarian drones was 404. And the other two were the I1s that I could put energy shells and discords on. So, um, I did run almost a very identical list, but I used the I had um, the thread tracers on two ships over the one. Um, Maybe they just banned Han because Han like there's no rebel list in the top five here. <laughs> Maybe they did. I don't know. There's a there's Although a ray I there. Like that, uh, I assume that's a ray. It could be a Poe. Yeah. I think it's a ray. I think I, when I looked, it was a ray. Yeah, that ray would also annihilate those drones. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, ray would just yeah. So I don't know. It whatever. It is what it is. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll run that next week and just for the fun of it. I own all those. Sh I own enough to run that list, so I could easily run that list if I want to. Are you coming next weekend, Alex? I really no, should. Not. I did submit that twenty-one point all Vader list. All right. Don't 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 show up with the twenty-one. <laughs> it's got the Defender Elite. It's balanced. All right. Maybe I'll run this. Maybe I will run this list, but just change up the thread tracers. A little bit differently on this list. I mean, um, thread chasers have really messed with me before, but that's also because I just disrespect my opponent and didn't read their list. I mean, you know, Tide Defender Vader with uh, Vader Elite <laughs> is basically the Empire version of Han, you know? That's yeah. basically it. Defender Elite Vader, Vader and Boy Vader and Customizable Vader. It's a great list. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Uh, sorry the episode was on Monday and a little bit later. Uh, we should be back to normal hours next week. Um, if you enjoy what we do and you want to help the show out, you're welcome to become a subscriber here on Twitch. You can follow us over on YouTube if you would like. Um, I don't think there's a subscribe button there, and you can donate to us on Patreon. Uh, with that being said, if you are around they do we do have a search camp in muskegon next sunday um so i think we have 
12 people or something like that signed up for it. So um, you could be here 13th. I don't know. It'll be fun. Um, I am guess I'm running this. Is this a seven ship list? It's an eight. It's eight ship list. All right, I got an eight ship list. I'm, I'll be running um, this weekend. So if you want to come see Tanner run an eight ship list, more power to you. Um, I maybe do we get to do shots for every time I bump one of my own ships? Yes, I think that I think that's what we need to do. You have to do the shots because if I'm bumping my own ships, I need the extra help, all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, oh, didn't and see me play against Josh, that was embarrassing. And a quick reminder for uh, anybody who follows us regularly here: uh, not this next weekend, but the coming weekend, we're going to have a uh, store championship here at Atomic Empire here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, we hope to see you guys over there. If you're in the area or anywhere close, come out to Atomic Empire to play uh, over at the store championship over there. Um, I will be there uh, to stream the uh, the tournament there, um, and uh, hopefully we'll have a great time. Bring you live X Wing for you guys and. Uh, and have a great time. Who who are you having um commentate with you? I'm still waiting to hear back, but uh I'm hoping to uh to get Mr. Chris Allen if he's feeling better. So there you go. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um Alex, do you guys have a podcast coming off of the bench at Warmers at all? Um while well, my internet was down, we were supposed to record it and then every you know Okay. Somehow a tornado actually hit Michigan, so that was rough. So yeah, it's a little weird. Soon, <laughs> soon we'll be able to record. All right. Well, either which way, thank you all for joining us. We will see you next week, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 2100 Eastern or 0100 UTC. Thank you all. Have a good night, and see you on the flippity flop. Have a good night.